A lot has gone right for the Portland Trailblazers in the past week. They played their way into a two-way tie for top three lottery odds with the Charlotte Hornets, somehow out-tanking the San Antonio Spurs. More recently, the Golden State Warriors lost in the 9 vs 10 play-in game, and since the Blazers own their pick, that pick will be in the lottery. Now that pick is top four protected, meaning the Warriors get it if they move into the top four of the lottery. That might not be a terrible thing for the Blazers, as then they would get Golden State's first round pick next season, which would only be top one protected. And next year's draft is a loaded draft that should be a lot of fun to cover. Now, there is contingencies on where exactly the Warriors lottery pick ends up. That of course is dependent upon playing games. Here, regardless, that pick will be between 12th and 14th on lottery night, giving it a minuscule chance to move up to the top four, but most likely would be conveyed to the Portland Trail Blazers in a decent part of the draft. But the rest of this video is a mailbag. I'm just gonna answer some questions. We're going to start off with the community tab. Is There's 12 questions here. Let's start off with Dumb Turtle 503 it says, of the current roster, what players are or have the potential to be rotation players on a championship contending roster. I think Anthony Simons, Jeremy Grant, DeAndre Ayton, and Malcolm Brogdon are the four clear-cut guys there. I think Sharp is good enough to be a rotation player on a championship contender, probably off the bench. And then Robert Williams, if he's healthy, has played for a championship contender. Those are six clear-cut guys. Other than that, you could maybe make a case for Tamani Kamara, and that's about it. Alex Wolf says, what would be your ideal realistic trade scenario to use the Golden State Warriors pick in? I don't want to trade that pick, so there is no ideal trade to use that Warriors pick in. Now, if it was something like Anthony Simons in the pick for a Franz Wagner, then you could probably talk me into that. And if the Blazers got their future first back from Chicago by flipping the Warriors pick for that, I wouldn't hate it too much. But otherwise, there really isn't anything out there that I would like to trade the Golden State Warriors pick for that's realistic. Eli Hanna says, was that Eric's mom featured on the latest episode of The Trail? I watched parts of it. I don't think she was on it, um, but maybe I'm wrong. The Interior says, what teams will make the best trade partners for the Blazers, and will there need to be three or more teams in a trade? The best team to be a trade partner with the Blazers depends on what the Blazers are trying to give up. Idealistically, it's going to be a team with a large trade exception or salary cap space where the Blazers can save a bunch of money because they're projected to be over $9 million into the luxury tax this offseason. Now, if a team's over the cap and doesn't have a trade exception big enough to take back a contract like Matisse Thibels, then they just have to outright match salary in a trade, where the Blazers could save a little bit, but they'd have to take salary back and it wouldn't be on expiring contracts or anything because it's a new season, because of the offseason. So those expiring contracts that the Blazers could have had at this past deadline if they traded Malcolm Brogdon for one are now free agents and obviously not tradable then. So the best trade partners, it more so has to do with what their salary picture and assets look like in order to help the Blazers save money. If the Blazers are looking to move off a guy like Anthony Simons, then you would just be looking for a trade partner that needs a guard like him. Maybe the Orlando Magic could make sense. But other than that, it, it's really hard to say at this point. If there is more teams included in a trade, then it does give the Blazers more opportunity to save money in a trade because instead of one team matching, you have two teams matching. So you can have both those teams take back a little bit more salary and then the Blazers get all the savings. Um, but that's the biggest thing trade-wise this offseason is how is the Blazers going to duck the tax because Jody Allen doesn't want to pay that. The Blazers are a 61 loss team. There's no reason they should be in the luxury tax in the first place. So that's what to watch for. Zachary Brem says, scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you for Alex Saar? I would say like a like an 8 if the Blazers got him. An 8 or, or a 9, I think he would be great for the Blazers. I don't think he's as good as Chet and definitely not as good as Wemby. But you're going to need somebody to guard those two guys in the long term. And I would love to see what the Blazers would do with a guy that can play the 4 or the 5. That has the level of offensive upside that Saar has. That 7 foot 1 can move, can block shots. He would bring a completely different dynamic to the Portland Trail Blazers that I think would be a lot of fun and something that the Blazers haven't had since I can remember. So I would be very excited for him in a Blazer uniform. And then another question from Zachary Brem says, of the guys on the roster, who do you expect to be kept and who do you expect to be either traded or moved on from the team? I expect Brogdon to be gone, but with his injury, it's hard to even say that confidence. I expect Matisse Thibel to potentially get shopped 
or Robert Williams. I only think the Blazers will have one of those two guys back next year. I think it should be Robert Williams because I don't think he has any trade value. And I'd rather just outright dump Thibault than Robert Williams. But it's really hard to say at this point because of the position the Blazers are in. They're going to have to shed salary, but who knows what that salary is. JP Savvy says, what's your prediction for the Bucks in the playoffs? I think the Bucks behind Dame beat the Pacers. But then in the second round against the Knicks, if they don't have like a 100% Giannis, maybe they don't play the Knicks. Maybe they play a 76ers. That's going to be a tough series regardless in the second round if they don't have Giannis at 100%. So it's hard to see him going too far, but we will have our playoff predictions tomorrow on Blazers Uprise Live, which will be right here on the main channel. We'll go live approximately 9 p.m. or so with our playoff predictions. Aeromancer asks none pizza with left beef i i don't know what's wrong with aeromancer john nash says should the warriors pick be surrendered to the bulls why or why not i don't think it's ideal because the blazers need young players that align with the timeline of their young core right now and who knows when that bulls pick is going to convey it probably would be in a couple years so it doesn't really make sense to push that off especially given that the blazers already have your picks Swaps in 2028 and 2030 with Milwaukee, and then a 2029 unprotected Milwaukee first, and a 2029 unprotected Boston first. It doesn't really make sense to push off another pick. You could make the case that, uh, given how weak this draft is at the top of it, that it could make sense to trade the 13th pick for the Blazers' future first back, because if it conveys like 17 or 18 in the future year, it's just as good. And it would also give the Blazers flexibility to package all their future first if they want to make a swing now move. However, I don't think they're ready for a swing now move and I don't think they will be ready for a swing now move uh, in the next couple of years. So I prefer to just be patient, just use the pick, draft the highest upside guy possible with that pick because the Blazers need more upside on this roster. They have a lot of solid role players and I think both their picks this year in the lottery will be a great chance to swing for some upside. Noah G says, is Dalton Connect a good fit for this roster? I think he's a good fit because the Blazers need shooting and he's a phenomenal shooter and I think he could come in and be a really really good bench score right away for a Blazers offense that needs some scoring punch off the bench however given that at the shooting guard and small forward spots the Blazers have Anthony Simons that plays there a little bit they have Shaden Sharp they have Matisse Thibel they have Delano Banton Tamani Kamara plays the three for this team that's a pretty decently sized log jam and it'd be hard to see the Blazers taking connect and like moving on from any of those guys. Now, I would play connect over Banton in a heartbeat and connect over Thibel in a heartbeat. However, that's the interesting thing with this offseason is the Blazers like need to move off a guy like Thibel to save money. He doesn't really make sense on this team. They have a lot of okay role players. However, none of them provide the scoring punch that a Dalton Connect would and that the Blazers need. So I think this roster is going to be a little bit more fluid this offseason than maybe people expect. Uh, but I could also see them doing nothing. And if they do nothing, then a guy like Connect is hard to fathom as a good fit on this roster, given the other players that they probably want to give minutes to. Chh Chuang one says, what's your ideal scenario on opening day of 2024? 2025 uh ideal scenario alex sar is the starting four jeremy grant has been traded for a first round pick and another asset malcolm brogdon is traded and the blazers duck the tax somehow matisse thibel was traded uh and i don't even really expect much back for brogdon or thibel and just get anything you can um but the rotation in my opinion the most ideal rotation would be Probably a starting lineup of Scoo, Ant, Sharp. You got Sar at the four and you got Aiton at the five. And you hope that Sar and Aiton can help out the three starting guards defensively. Then off the bench, you got Banton as a backup point forward type of player. You got Kamara playing a bunch of minutes, probably subbing in early for one of the guards at the three spot. You got Tishon Salon, who the Blazers take with the Warriors pick at the four, and then hopefully you have a healthy Robert Williams playing the backup center spot, and if not, then you can always swing Sar there to play some minutes, and Duop Reith is still on the team. I think that's the ideal scenario for this rebuild going into next year, and then shout to Autograph415 says, Ant, Scoop, Banton, start bench and cut. Go. I mean, easily it's cut, Banton. Uh, at this point, you still start 
Ant because he's better than Scoot, has more tenure, right? So start Ant, bench Scoot, cut Ben, easy. And then I had a few questions over on Twitter. Make sure you follow me. There's a link in the description box below. Michael Crow asks, do you think Jody commits tax evasion because she doesn't like paying the tax? She's going to try and evade it somehow. I'm not sure exactly how. Blazer Season asks, how do you think we should handle Robert Williams this offseason? Do you want to kick the tires on him one more time and see if he can stay healthy, or would you rather we just cut bait now before he gets hurt again? I don't think the Blazers could get anything in a trade for him right now whatsoever, so it doesn't really make sense to trade him. It makes more sense to see what he can provide this team next year and see if he can rehabilitate his value, and maybe you keep him long term and the team gets good in two to three years and he's still on the team, although that is a bit hard to fathom. It just comes down to you're selling very, very, very low on him if you trade him right now, so it doesn't really make sense to. It almost makes sense to just roll the dice, and then if not, he's a contract that you can trade to match salary around the trade deadline. Kevin asks, if we potentially get the first pick draft SAR, what do you think the starting lineup for next season will look like, assuming Jeremy is still here? So I just went over my ideal lineup, which had Jeremy Grant getting traded, but I have a feeling if the Blazers drafted SAR, there is a decent chance they keep Jeremy Grant, and they start Jeremy at the three. Now, that means you have to take one of the guards and put him off the bench, which, who is that? It's probably Scoot, or is it Sharp? Do you start Scoot, Ant, Grant, Sar, Aiton? I don't know. It'd be fascinating to see which one of the three guards they bring off the bench next year. It, it would be Scoot or Sharp, I think. I don't think it would be Ant. Um, if I had to guess, it would probably be Scoot. Uh, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I want to start him going into next year. I think he's going to take a leap next year if you do so. But you're probably having Scoot off the bench, and then in the backup three, you have Kamara, and then, I don't know, you probably don't play Banton, and you probably don't play Thibault because you got Grant starting at the three. You don't have the minutes for that. That would be very, very tricky. That's the thing. If the Blazers get Sar, it makes so much sense to trade Jeremy just so you don't have to start him at the three, and you can clear up minutes you can start all three guards you can play a guy like banton if you took a guy like dalton connect with the warriors pick you can maybe find some minutes for him it, sar just creates a, a bit of a log jam with jeremy and if you move jeremy down a position it creates a log jam at the small forward spot at, at the shooting guard spot as well because you'd have to play guys like thibel guys like sharp more minutes at the shooting guard spot so uh it's gonna be interesting to see how they balance the lineup because they do have a lot of players that could be deserving of minutes going into next season but they need more upside and they need more top end talent and you definitely prioritize that over role players so we'll see how it all sorts out aj says after scoot's impressive streak of games where do you think he should start off from next season starting or the bench oh, i just i just answer that or do you see how he looks in trading camp before moving to that decision uh i think with how he played at the end of the year yeah you you got to start him next year in my opinion you got to give him the chance to have a sophomore breakout he has the talent. He's going to work his ass off this offseason. I have no doubts about that. And you want to continue to build off some of the confidence he hopefully developed over the last month or two of the season. Now, he's a guy that doesn't get swayed easily. He seems to have a pretty good mental approach to the game. But regardless, I would like to allow him to build off uh, this up and down rookie season with a starting role going into next year. If he's not ready, then obviously you don't start him. But I don't think that's a possibility he's going to work hard this offseason shout out to robert ryan who says if portland ends up not moving up in the draft do you think the team would consider trading up to lansar if so what kind of package would get it done what would you be willing to move i think maybe a three-team trade if you had grant going to a third team and they trade assets to couple with the blazers i don't know sixth pick or wherever they end up drafting if they don't move up then you could maybe get Sar, maybe trade up enough, and I would probably be willing to do that because I think Sar has legitimate star upside and is a much better defensive player than Jeremy Grant already. So I would be willing to do that, and that might be what it would take. Maybe you throw in the Warriors pick into that too. The good news is the Blazers could save money um, doing so if they do it right. Uh, and could get closer to ducking the tax. Shout out to Positive Blazer Fan says, do you think it's important to keep the young core together this offseason, or do you think a few of them should be dealt for a player? I think it's important to keep together for reference. I think it's important to 
not make any rash decisions in terms of trading Anthony Simons for low value just because you got Scoot and Sharp. I don't think any one of those three guards is good enough where you make a decision now. I think that Anthony Simons is the guy that makes the most sense to get traded. Unfortunately, he's the guy who's the best player, right? He's the best out of the three guards right now, so it's hard to move him right the second. Also, I don't think he's going to be uh, as valuable as he should be on the trade market. So I agree in terms of keeping the core together. However, there is a lot of like mediocre role players that I would be completely fine with moving off of. Like if the Blazers elected to trade Chris Murray and Jabari Walker because they drafted T. John Salon and want to get him minutes and don't have the roster spots and want to save money and a team with a, you know, $3 million trade exception is willing to take back Chris Murray, then I would be completely fine with that. You know, you'd want to get something a little bit bad considering they just drafted Chris Murray in the first round. However, that was a mistake of a pick in my opinion. So I think the guards, they keep together, but everything else could be very fluid. Shout out to Dominic says, how do you expect the next three seasons to go? And how do you want those seasons to go? I expect next season, this team to try and make a plan. However, I want them to just focus on the rebuild. Next year's draft is really good. And I'm completely fine with struggling next season as well and getting really good lottery odds once again, because I think it would give the Blazers a legitimate chance if they got lucky in the lottery to win a championship in the next decade. Um, but I do expect them to push for the play in two seasons from now. I expect them to be in the play in and then three seasons from now. I kind of still expect them to be in the play-in. Uh, I, I don't really think they're going to be a top six team in the West in the next three years. The would be fascinating to look back three years from now and see how this rebuild actually goes. Shout out to Garrett, who says, who do you think is the best player trade we get with the Warriors pick? I just don't think a team is really looking to trade a role player for that pick unless they're trying to save money. But the problem is the Blazers also need to save money. So it... I can't really answer your question because I don't think there is a like good player that is a good trade for the Blazers that makes sense financially. And shout out to EV Venti who says, who are you hoping falls down to our Warriors pick? Tijon Salon falling to that Warriors pick. It's a high upside guy. It's a front court guy. He's very raw, but he's very young. And I could see him developing into an all-star. I'm not as bullish on him as Eric is. Eric's in love with them. I just don't think he hasn't shown enough creation wise or in terms of being able to read the game to have as much faith as Eric does in him developing into that star caliber player. But I do think he has a chance and he has higher ceiling one of the highest ceilings in this draft it's just going to take a lot of work to get him to fulfill it but that's the type of guy that the blazers need to take with the warriors pick is somebody that could change the tra trajectory of their franchise if he ends up panning out optimistically so thank you guys for your questions i appreciate it gonna have a, another video tomorrow maybe two we'll see i'm going to do preseason prediction review soon we're going to take a look at analytics from the previous year. And then also later today, I'll be posting Blazers Pulse polls in the community tab for a Blazers Pulse episode on Friday. So make sure you vote in that polls, leave your comments in those polls. And with that being said, that's a wrap for this mailbag. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, as always, peace out. Go Blazers.